Hey, welcome back guys. This is Getting Started with HTML, part one. If you have little to no experience coding HTML, this will be a great video tutorial for you to follow along with. You will actually be building your first website. It's not gonna win any design awards, trust me, but you will be building a website that you can view in your browser as you follow along with the video. Here's what we'll cover in the part one video. We'll look at what a text editor is and how to get you started using one. We'll explain how to make and save an HTML file, how to lay out an HTML project in HTML5. We'll look at some of the basic HTML elements as we lay out our HTML project. And as we go along, we will be able to view our project in the browser. Ready? Let's get started. Well, there are lots of different text editors out there and some really great ones like Atom, Sublime Text, Coda, Brackets. Personally, I use Sublime Text, but today I'm going to show you how to get started with Brackets because it's a really easy code editor to get started with. It's really user friendly and it has this neat feature where you can click a button and easily view your project in your browser right from the text editor. For starters, I want to recommend that you use Chrome or Firefox, preferably Chrome. And as we move along and learn more, you'll see that the Chrome dev tools are really helpful. And Chrome is just an all around stellar browser for web developers. So if you don't have Chrome, uh, if you're using Safari or God help you Internet Explorer, I do recommend that you download Chrome and get used to using Chrome. But to start, go ahead and Google the brackets text editor. You should find that pretty easily. Brackets.io. Go ahead and hit that button there, download brackets. Once the file has downloaded, go ahead and click on that file and install brackets to your applications. Then go ahead and open brackets once you've got brackets opened, I want you to go over to this little battery icon over here and click on that. This is where you can manage some really neat plugins for brackets. And the first thing that I want you to do is in the search bar, I want you to type in Emmet. This is a great plugin available not only on brackets, on other text editors as well. I use it on Sublime it's going to save you a lot of time. What this plugin does is it allows you to type with shortcuts and it will drastically reduce the amount of time it takes you to code. Now, you're probably thinking, wait a minute, I don't even know how to code yet. I'm not worried about how long it takes me. I just want to figure out how to do it. I get it. But if you start using some of the shortcuts right away, you'll get used to them and you'll learn more quickly from the beginning how to use these shortcuts as you go along. And they're really useful. So type in Emmet and click on Emmet here and go ahead and install this plugin. And then there's one other plugin that I'll ask you to install. And if you type in autosave, you'll see this autosave files on window blur. Go ahead and install this one. What this plugin does, it's really useful. And again, this is a feature that you can get on all text editors, not only brackets, but this will s automatically save your file every time you navigate to a new window. So if you go to look at your document in the browser, for example, and you haven't saved, you won't see the updated changes. But instead of having to manually go and click file, save, every time before you go to preview your changes. This plugin will make sure that those changes are always saved for you. And when you go to preview your changes, you'll always see the updated saved file. So go ahead and install that and that should get us going for now. All right, what we've got now is a text editor. You may see some introductory files over here. Uh, if you wanna take some time and read through those, uh, go ahead and pause the video and take a look at that. Otherwise, you can start a new file. 
and you can go ahead and name your file whatever you'd like. Uh, but what you want to do is, as soon as you have opened a new file, you want to actually save as so that you can name it and make sure that the file gets saved as an HTML file. So I'm going to go ahead and save this as HTML intro dot HTML. So this dot HTML ensures that the programming that you do in this file is read as HTML code. If you don't save it as an HTML file, your browser will not understand this as HTML code and it won't know quite what to do with it. So go ahead and save that as a .html file. Save it to a folder somewhere on your desktop or somewhere else so that you know exactly where this file is and you can come back to it easily later and add more files to the same directory. All right. So here we have it, our first file, our HTML intro. Now, how do we get started? Here's a neat trick. If you installed Emmet, there's this great shortcut, and this will only work if you've saved your file as an HTML file, but you can type an exclamation mark and click on tab, and this will get you started with your HTML file, with all of the basic information that any HTML file needs. Pretty neat. And if you didn't install em Emmet, this won't work. So if for some reason you didn't install the Emmet plugin, or you're using another text editor and you didn't install Emmet on that plugin, you may need to go ahead and type all of this out by hand. The first thing we want to do here is go ahead and name our document. And uh, let's go ahead and name this profile page since that is what we will be making over the course of these next few videos. The first thing that we want to do is think about how we want to lay out our HTML document. I want to give you a preview of what we're going to be making. It's nothing fancy. Like I said, it definitely will not be winning any design contests, but we will be making a web page. And we're going to make a web page that looks a little bit something like this. A very basic, very simple page with a background image, a header, a navigation bar, a couple of sections of content, and a side with some hobbies, and a really basic footer at the bottom. So this is what we're aiming for. We're setting the bar pretty low, but we're just learning here. We're just getting started. And by making this website, we're going to learn some of the basics of HTML and eventually CSS as well. So how do we get here? Well, by looking at this page, you can see that we've got some different sections on the website. So even if you've never coded HTML before, you can see that there are clearly some distinct sections on this website. We have this sort of header area at the top that has some content in it. Uh, we've got this other section here, the snapshot section, with an image uh, and a very brief paragraph. We've got a video section, and we've got this sort of aside section here. And if you look closely, you'll see that there is also a footer section. So this gives us a little bit of a clue as to how we're going to lay out this very simple website. So let's go back to the code editor. and. We're going to put all of our content in, our website layout, in between the opening and closing body tags. Everything is between the opening and closing HTML tags, and then we've got an opening and closing head tag and an opening and closing body tag. The opening and closing head tag stores a lot of the metadata about your website. So this stores things that won't necessarily show up on the browser, that won't be seen on your website as such, but it does have information about your website. All of the content that we want to see on the website, however, is going to go in between the opening and closing body tags. So now I'm going to show you how to, how to start a basic layout in HTML. Well, let's start with that header. Now, you'll notice that I didn't type any angle brackets. Not because we don't need any, but because we installed Emmet. So if I type in header and press the tab button, our text editor not only adds the angle brackets, 
but it adds the closing tag as well. And it leaves the cursor right in the middle there. So now I'm going to press the return button. We've got our header tags, our opening and closing header tag. This is where our header information is going to go. So the title of our site and possibly the navigation. I'll leave that for now. We'll come back to it. We also had a section with our snapshot information. What we'll do here is we'll assign this opening section tag an ID so that we know which section, since there's more than one section in our site. So we'll give this an ID of snapshot. Now, be careful when you use the ID attribute because you can only use one specific ID once. So if we have a section titled snapshot, we won't want to give the ID snapshot anywhere else in our project. We only want to use that one time. Okay, so we had the snapshot section, and then we also had the section with the video in it. So maybe let's call this second section the video section. And if you remember, inside the video section, we had that aside. And that aside had a lot of fun things that we like to do. Uh, so we'll just give this the idea of fun. Instead of section tags, you can use div tags. But one of the great things about the most recent version of HTML, HTML5, is that we have these tags like section tags and aside tags and article tags and main tags that give us a little more of an idea about what those tags are doing and how they're operating in terms of the layout of our site. Uh, before HTML5, you just had divs everywhere, divs inside of divs inside of divs inside of divs. And it could get pretty messy. So the nice thing about HTML5 is that we now have these section, aside, article, main tags that help us to see the function of each of those bits of code. Now, finally, the last, the last major piece of our HTML layout was the footer. So let's go ahead and add the footer tag. We've now got the basic layout of our HTML project. If we were to view this, we wouldn't see anything yet because there's actually no content. There's nothing in between the pages here. Now, to view your project, you'll just click this little lightning bolt over here on the right. Again, this is why I think brackets is nice for folks just starting out, because it makes it really easy to view your site in your browser. So if we click that, we'll open a page, and as you see, there's nothing there. But that's all right, because we're going to start adding some content now. Let's start with the header. The first thing we want to do is add an h1 heading. So this is a level one heading tag. So we'll just type h1 and again tab, which gives us our opening and closing tags. And then we want to put the heading of our site, something like profile and maybe your name. Because what this site is, is simply going to be your profile. Pretty basic, nothing fancy. This is where we would put the title or the logo on our website. Now, when we go back and take a look in our browser, so long as you've auto-saved, you should see something like this. Total magic. So now we've got this level one heading. Okay, let's keep moving. Do we want anything else in our header before we go on to the snapshot section? Yeah, let's put some navigation in there. Now, you can do navigation with an unordered list, but let's wrap that in nav tags. So we'll do nav tab that out, do an unordered list, UL for unordered list, tab, and inside that unordered list we're going to have some list items. We'll do three for now. Here's another shortcut. On a Mac, if you press Command D, you'll get a copy of your current line. So I'm going to press Command D twice. This gives us three list items. Now, inside those list items, let's put whatever pages we might want in our navigation menu. 
So let's do home. We usually have a home page on our web website. Maybe an about me page. And how about a contact page? Now we're not actually going to make these extra pages, we're just going to make a single page site. But if you had a site that had multiple pages, you would very likely want to have a navigation menu in the header of your website. And that's what this is for. Now our navigation won't actually navigate anywhere until we link that up. But we'll get to that in part two of getting started. For now we just want to get our main layout. That should wrap up the header pretty good. We've got the title of our site and our navigation. Let's take a look at it. Again, not terribly fancy, but it's there. Let's move on to the snapshot section. In the snapshot section, let's start out with a level two header, snapshot, and then we're gonna add an image. Another Emmet shortcut, IMG tab, gives you the image tag. Now, note that there's no closing tag for the image. This is one HTML element that does not have a closing tag. We've just got one set of angle brackets here. Now, you've got two attributes in here, SRC and ALT. ALT is alt text. It's really important that you get used to filling in the alt text for images. This tells users who are on screen readers or other kinds of equipment what the image is. SRC is for the source, the image source. This tells the browser where to find the image. Now this might be a file in your local directory or it might be a URL. What we'll do is we will add a URL for now. If you have an image online somewhere on Imgur or Flickr or Facebook or anywhere, go ahead and, and, and navigate to that or any image really. When you're looking for images online though and you do a Google search, one thing you should get used to doing is making sure that you filter the usage rights and only use images that are labeled for reuse. That way you're not violating any copyright laws. So let's go ahead and view this image of the Belchers here. And I'm going to copy this URL. Control C. I'm going to go back to my project and I'm going to paste that URL as the source of my image. Now let's go ahead and take a look and see what we've got. Whoa. Too cool. I've made a web page with words and belchers and things. Pretty neat, right? Now you'll notice that this image is pretty big because it just is whatever size the image is that we link to. But we'll change the size of the image and lots of other things when we get to the getting started with CSS videos. In addition to the source then, we want to give some we want to give some alternate text for the image. And we'll just say the belchers. Now along with this image, let's add some paragraph text. Uh, this should be sort of an about you snippet. So just add a paragraph tag and a little text that says something about you. Okay, cool. So that's pretty good. That concludes our snapshot section. Let's move on to the next section, the video section. We're actually going to add a video in part two of getting started with HTML. But remember that we also have this aside section inside of the video section. So let's go ahead and, and work that out. So inside of the aside section, let's go ahead and do a level two heading and give that the heading of hobbies. And then under hobbies, let's do an unordered list, UL, and in that unordered list, do a list item, and inside each list item, go ahead and list out some of your hobbies or things you like to do. 
Great. Also inside this aside section, let's maybe add some of your favorite places. So we'll do another level two heading. And let's say favorite places. So this will be another unordered list. And the list items will be some of your favorite places. Great. And lastly, inside the footer, we'll just add a copyright. And we do that with the ampersand copy semicolon, put the year, and your name. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we've made so far. All right, not bad. It's, uh, again, not the most fascinating website you've ever seen, but it is a website nonetheless. Congratulations, this is the beginnings of your very first website. Great work so far, we've got a little ways to go. But look what we've done. We've got you started with a text editor, you know how to create an HTML file, how to set up an HTML layout, and how to view your HTML project in the browser. Pretty neat. In the next video, we will move forward and learn a little bit more about HTML and get it ready to move forward into the getting started with CSS videos where we can start styling our website and make it look a little bit better. Great job guys, see you in the next video. Getting started with HTML. All right, so, all right, well, for me, it, I've, but, okay, cool. We'll work a little more on the, our website and Okay, so we had the snapshot. We had the snapshot section. Bella. Fuck off.